Hey, it's Trent with Whip Around, where we keep the world's fleets moving. In this video, we're gonna hear from the CVSA's Chris Turner and Scopolitis Transportation Consultant, Stephen Kepler. What's well, International Road Check, you might be wondering? Well, it's the annual 72-hour commercial vehicle enforcement blitz that happens in the US, Canada, and Mexico. In this video, we'll learn about the history of more than 30 years of road checks and millions of enforcement inspections, as well as when does road check usually happen and why, what type of inspections officers will be undertaking and what they look for each year, what the most common violations are, and how you can prepare your fleet for road check every year. This video is a bit long as we do dig into some detail here. So at any point, feel free to speed up your player by clicking the settings button in the lower right hand corner and you can adjust the playback speed from there. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Whip Around so that you don't miss any content like this. And also we wanna hear from you. So throughout this video, if you find yourself with a question, a comment, a thought, drop them in the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Here is Chris and Steve on Road Check. I'll jump into Road Check 2021 and give you a little background on Road Check. Generally speaking, uh, Steve may want to jump in here a time or two as well. He was instrumental in a lot of this over time. And then I'll talk about the focus of this year's Road Check. So in 2021, uh, well, before we get straight to 2021, um, there's been 1.84 uh, million roadside inspections uh, completed since Road Check began in 1998. And it's been ongoing ever since then. It is a three-day campaign. Some jurisdictions uh, run that 24-7. I know we used to in Kansas where we'd have someone inspecting trucks 24 hours a day for those three days. I actually guess 24-3, not 24-7. Um, but we're very proud also to have Canada participating in a large part. And then Mexico, this last couple of years, has really stepped up their game as well and has been contributing both through the SCT and um, through their National Guard completing those inspections. So it is truly a North American effort over that three-day period to take a snapshot of the industry. Now, for those of you who have been around a while, whether you're live or watching this later on, uh, it always used to be the first week in June and was for most of my career. And it was hot and I came home a nasty mess. Well, you can imagine uh, as we brought in uh, Mexico, uh, it's a little further south and it's a little hotter in June. So we had to try and find some uh, way to work through that. So it was at least physically comfortable for everyone trying to complete it. And so since we have folks from Alaska all the way down to Mexico um, completing inspections during road check, that's a little bit problematic. So basically what we decided is we're just gonna risk bad weather for everybody, I think is what the committee went with. So in May, uh, last year is when we tried it early May. Turns out that's still too cold for our northern partners, both in Canada and northern United States. Um, so we did move it to uh, the middle week in May this, this coming year. But last year it was May 4th through 6th. You could see our focus was on um, driver requirements, hours of service, and then also on the vehicle components was lighting. And we had about 40,000 inspections. Now that is not typical as I get into some of the data from last year. Usually we have closer, um, have built this up over time to about 70, between 65 and 70,000 inspections. But as you can imagine, um, the 2021 snapshot and 2020, because it was actually done in September, are reflective of everything that's going out there on in the world, right? So um, obviously COVID, and then I suppose you have to be living under a rock not to be aware of the um, uh, issues that have been in the news about law enforcement. Um, not a political statement either way, uh, but there are fewer law enforcement officers today than there were in 2019. And they're, they're really, um, uh, I think, trying to figure out their kind of new place and what's going on from what at least I hear from uh, my friends still uh, working on law enforcement. And as they have fewer folks, uh, which they do, uh, those folks are more dedicated to uh, just responding to the calls and a little less dedicated to traffic enforcement because that's something you uh, do either if you have a dedicated division or if you have time to. And those mix app positions um, are usually, um, while dedicated, they still have to take those calls for service first. And let's just use the example of crashes. We've had more crashes and more fatalities. They've got to respond to those. So if they're responding to those, they can't complete as many inspections. So we were down on inspections for a couple of reasons. COVID probably primarily the biggest reason, but we still had some great data. 40,000 inspections over a three-day period across all of North America does provide some, <clears throat> some interesting data. I really talk about the level ones. Uh, I do have all of it if you want to look at it, but the level one inspections, there were just under 20,000 done in the U.S., 
You can see those out of service rates for the vehicle and driver. Those are pretty consistent over time. Uh, I think I have another slide here and a couple of slides that will at the very end here that talks about the trends we have seen over time. And we've seen some really good things. So if we look way back into the when road check began, that out of service rate was significantly different. Um, but our level one, you're going to have more vehicles typically out of service because that's the more stringent of the inspection. Uh, driver out of service is pretty consistent at around that 5% area uh, year over year. What are the top vehicle uh, categories you may ask? Well, um, consistently, uh, these top five, they may shuffle in the order that they are in, um, but these are pretty consistently in the top five. And you can see you have brake system, tires, lights, uh, brake adjustment, and cargo securement. Uh, brake systems make up the lion's share of that and tires next. And we talk about the components for the 2021, 2022 road check wheel ends. Tires are a big part of that, and they are what uh, has that whole wheel end component being such a high, uh, almost a quarter of the violations we see every year. A lot of that's tires. Uh, you can see there, uh, brakes is always a factor. Tires. Tires is one of the things that we certainly know tires go out, tires have failures, but really making sure you have that proper tire inflation, proper tire adjustment, that you're not overloaded, um, that your wheels and hubs, they're not loose, those holes aren't expanded, that the bolts are tight, the locking mechanisms are tight, are going to prevent a lot of those violations from happening. Also with lights, uh, you can't have necessarily a light for every occasion, but for those lights and components that do go out on your vehicle, whether it's headlights or I would argue, especially brake lights and turn signals, uh, have some spares uh, in your truck so you can swap those out right away should one go out on you. Uh, make sure you do those effective pre-trips and post-trips and then change those lights out at the beginning or end before you leave or as your day is complete uh, or certainly before you head off again. And that'll eliminate a lot of those lighting violations. Um, next up, driver um, out of service violation. So, and this one was, I don't want to use the word surprising, but FMCSA um, talks a lot about the number of hours of service violations decreasing, uh, which made last year's result of hours of service violations placing folks out of service at 41%, um, a little at odds with, with that. And so we're, we're taking a look at that. I know FMCSA is, is as well. Um, you know, some of that could be, uh, and this is just me speculating, I uh, have no facts to back this up, but in visiting with industry and last year's road check, as we talked about the results and what it meant, um, especially last year with COVID and the pressure to get all of the on-time deliveries where they were going, some of that risk reward that drivers, you know, may calculate in their mind, uh, it erred on the side of, I'm going to make more money uh, taking this trip and risk the hours of service violation. Um, certainly that was, um, brought to my attention by some of the larger companies who talked about what they were being paid to deliver those, deliver those loads. Some of it could be inspectors getting a little bit better with the hours of service and ELDs and ELD transfers working more effectively. Uh, not really sure, but that was a, a tremendously high out of service percentage, even though the number itself at 1,203 was pretty low, relatively speaking. Um, wrong class of license. Um, that one just always kind of baffles me. Uh, know what vehicle you're driving and have the appropriate class of license. Um, other is that's something that's going to be fixed uh, in my notes here. I'll make sure I get it right. The examples of the others were operating without the required uh, operating authority, expired or no medical certificate, or operating commercial motor vehicle while ill or fatigued or in the drug and alcohol clearinghouse. Um, so we have split those out. One of the things that RoadCheck did last year is they allowed me to split those out. So we, uh, there are a lot of drug and alcohol clearinghouse violations, and that really is what jumps that other number up, uh, as long uh, plus the ill or fatigued or no medical certificate. So those will be broken out uh, this coming year, and, and hopefully you won't see that other in the top 10 at all, because that's not helpful if you don't know what it is. And to that point, just to add, I know that that's an emphasis area now for you guys and FMCSA for drivers that are in prohibited status. So for the carriers that are on the line, pay attention to that. Make sure you're doing your queries and, and watching that. <clears throat> yeah, it's a big deal. That's a, it's a pet peeve of mine. I, I taught, uh, I was a drug recognition expert and one of the longest serving in Kansas when I retired since 2002. And I've taught um, divided attention SOST, which is a standardized field sobriety testing uh, over that same period of time, almost 20 years. And when we talk about the increase in crashes, you're certainly seeing more 
alcohol was at, you know, let's say roughly 50% for a long time. And it dropped down as, and got cleared down to about 20%. Uh, percent. But what did we do as a driving nation? We supplemented that 30% with drugs uh, and their corresponding crash. So I don't care what metric you look at, CDC, NHTSA, NTSA, uh, TRB. Uh, we're doing another study on that right now with TRB and a panel I'm working on. But um, they are they're finding more and more uh, illicit and prescribed medications that drivers are under the influence of, both in commercial motor vehicles and passenger cars. So take the time uh, for sure to make sure you don't have someone um, that is disqualified and in the drug and alcohol clearing clearing house for someone who's impaired behind the wheel. If you want to talk about a nuclear verdict, um, the, that's what's going to get you there, right? An impaired driver, especially if you knew or should have known. Um, going back to an Arizona crash that happened about a year and a half ago now, someone is in the drug and alcohol clearinghouse, which means they're prohibited for safety sensitive operations in a commercial motor vehicle that requires a CDL. So they were operating a straight truck and there were seven bicyclists in Arizona. They were all in a line and the pace car had moved to the front to block the wind because it was a really windy day. Turned out to be a tragic error because the impaired driver who was prohibited in the drug and alcohol clearinghouse took out all of the bicycles on his way to hitting what should have been the follow car and was the lead car and killed all but one. So killed seven, six or seven, I think. Um, so those tragedies when we talk about, they're not, they're not a lot of uh, impaired drivers um, corresponding to the relative population of drivers and hour and miles that are driven out there, but the risk is so much higher. So um, yeah, this is, that's an easy step. Make sure you check that drug and alcohol clearing house. And if someone's in there, uh, take the appropriate action. Well, and, and, on, and to add to that, I know during road check, at least, I don't know the most recent data, but we were tracking it. There's about three times as much enforcement activity happening during that week as rest of the year in terms of volume of activity. So there's a lot more enforcement that's out during that time period. So, um, and, and a lot of them are doing driver and different types of enforcement activities. So let's make sure you're minding your P's and Q's. Yep. There, and there is a big, big, big push out there to really be checking drug and alcohol um, uh, from the roadside as well. FMCSA is uh, asking states to have more drug recognition experts on hand to put more folks through. There's an intermediate training called A-RIDE um, as well. Uh, just to give you an example, we sent all 400 of our inspectors through A-RIDE and our, in, our percent increase in the number of commercial motor vehicle drivers found to be under the influence jumped by like 10% or 12% that year, just because they recognized what they were seeing before you might've thought that driver was tired. And then you recognize, Hey, wait a minute, tired might equal impairment. And they would do those checks. So um, anyway, yeah, be careful out there for sure. Uh, Tim got your message. Perfect. I'll keep rolling. Um, so our hazmat, I won't spend much time here uh, unless we have a, a ton of hazmat uh, curiosity, but definitely it's, a, it's the things that we always see with hazmat, the loading of the hazardous material, the placards, shipping papers, uh, marking, and then in the training certificate. So uh, really that's a, a kind of an attention to detail, making sure that it's loaded correctly, that it's secured correctly, and that you have the appropriate placard and the shipping paper is, is both marked appropriately and accessible to the driver. Um, all of those things will speed everything up and prohibit those out of service that nobody wants. All right, history of road check real quick, and then we'll jump into this year's uh, focus. So um, you can see as we look at uh, that orange, that's a level one vehicle out of service. That's what I was talking about. Going clear back to 1991, that was at 35%. Um, it is uh, hovered around plus 20%, a little less than 25 for several years now. And you can see it's gone up and down over that time, but most significantly up until just the last few years where it's been consistently uh, or where it's been consistent, kind of steady, it was driven down over time. And we hope to continue that trend uh, in the future uh, as well. And so uh, we could talk about this forever, but um, things have gotten better over time when we talk about vehicle components and vehicle safety, uh, large part, both due to enforcement and then our industry partners as well. Uh, making sure that they're the early adopters of that technology and keeping folks safe. So obviously road check is not the only time that you should be focused on the condition of your compliance and safety within your fleet. It is however a great reminder to pause and look at the systems you have set up within your fleet to ensure that compliance is happening year round. If you wanna learn more about this year's road check, the focus area, some tips and tricks and what to look out for, you can find that video here. 
If you wanna learn more about Whip Around and how we can ensure compliance and safety through our fleet maintenance and inspection software, you can go to whiparound.com or click the link down in the description. Also, we wanna hear from you, so please put a comment down below, whether that's you enjoyed this, whether that you have a question about something specific, or you'd like us to talk to a specific topic within the industry, whether that's compliance, safety, you name it. We would love to do so, so put a comment down below. And last thing, don't forget to subscribe. We don't want you to miss any of these videos, and we wanna continue the conversation with you. So click the subscribe button, and we'll see you soon.